God loves people who are willing to look farther than they can see. These wise men really were wise because they were looking, but they weren't just looking for any old thing. They were looking for the king. You see, God revealed to them through nature that something was going on, that he was up to something. But through his word, he revealed to them that there was a new king. It's amazing to me, and, and, and a little bit ironic, I think, that the shepherds, do you remember the shepherds? We, we didn't talk about them, but you remember the shepherds out in their fields, Jews, who were totally surprised by the birth of Jesus. Jews, totally surprised. Wise men, pagan through and through, pagan to the bone, who were looking for the Messiah. Isn't that interesting? Those who should have been looking weren't looking. They weren't anticipating. They weren't looking for the king. You know, these wise men show up. It's almost like childlike the way they show up. Hey, tell us about your king. And to whom do they go? They go to the Jews. They go to the residing king of the Jews and expect him to know about the newborn king of the Jews. And then he doesn't know, so he asks the religious people of the day. These childlike, almost inquisitive wise men show up looking for the king and they go where they think the people who are religious would know. You know, they think the religious people would be looking for the king too. That's a natural thing. They were looking for the king. And they were pagan through and through. And those who were religious, the church folks of the day, were looking. Weren't anticipating. I want to challenge you today. I want to challenge you to be one who looks for God. Look for Him. Expect a new encounter with Him. Because your life has changed since you first encountered Him. It's different. And He's wanting to, for you to encounter Him again in this new part of your life. In this new phase of your life. In this new chapter of your life. However you old you are. Whatever your experience is, God wants to meet you right where you are, but you've got to be looking. And you've got to be looking for the King. You know, we look for all sorts of things to give us meaning and value and significance. But these guys had it right. Pagan as they were, they were looking for the only one who could give meaning and value and significance and abundant life. So I want to challenge you today. To look for an encounter with the King. Get deeper in your faith. Join a small group. Join a Sunday school class. Spend more time in prayer and meditation. Focus more intently in worship on God's purpose and meaning and significance for your life. You know, this is not my notes, and I probably can get in trouble when I do this, but we're going to finish up here. This Tiger Woods thing will go away. And, I, and I've been thinking a lot about that. Why are we so enamored with this? As a nation, as the world, our culture. I think it's because it has hit us where we, where we live. You see, this was a guy who had it all. This was a guy who had real life. This was a guy who had abundance. This is a guy who was at the top of his profession. And we've watched that crumble around him. And we don't know what to make of it. Because see, he had become the embodiment of what life is all about to too many people. Including some of us in this room. And you see, these pagan searchers. They knew that God was up to something. They knew 
something was different. And they went looking, but they went looking for the king of the Jews. For what are you looking? That's the question. You know, old King Herod, he was wicked. What he did to kill those babies was a terrible, terrible thing. But he got something right. Did you know that? He's got a lesson for us today. As a matter of fact, he's got something that he said something that the church needs to hear. Remember what he said? Can you throw it up there again, Rich? He said, go and carefully search out. Right? Go and carefully search for this child. Go and make a careful search for the child. And as soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. That captures what life is about. Go and find this newborn king. And when you find him, tell folks so that they can worship him too. Of course, he was lying. But that doesn't mean his advice isn't good. You see, the thing that so upset Herod, that he also got that we don't get, too often we don't get it, is that you can't have two kings. See, Herod knew that. You can't have two kings. He knew that if there was a new king in town, that, oops, that must mean I'm not going to be king. See, he understood. You can't have two kings on the throne. Only one king on the throne. And, and too often, we, we let that slip away from us. And we put, allow other things to bump Jesus off the throne of our life. Fill in the blanks, right? We can let so many things. People. Possessions. Positions. Power. Pride. Prestige. Family. Husband. Wife. Girlfriend. Boyfriend. Selfishness. Envy. Lust. Sloth. Anger. Fill in the blanks. It's as many as there are people in this room. Right? We can let jobs. We can let hobbies. Facebook. Oh, I've gone from preaching the metal now. I? I almost said golf, but I didn't want to go there. But we can, can't we? We can let lots of things nudge Jesus off of the throne of our life. There can only be one king of our realm who is it? See, Herod understood that. These pagan magi understood that. Do you? Do I? If we do, then we will seek Him today. And we will surrender our life to the Lord who gives that which is life and need. God, thank you for this group of men that we really don't know a lot about. But this story teaches us a lot about you and your will for us. May we surrender throne of our life to King Jesus and in so doing receive life of my life now and forevermore. In His name we pray. Amen. Commit to that today as we sing and sing.